Hello everyone and welcome to our online missionary preparation class. Today's lesson 13, Teaching the Gospel of Jesus Christ, Part 1. My name is Jimmy Smith. I'm the founder of the Latter-day Saint Mission Prep website. I live in Texas with uh, my family. They're on the screen. If you're watching, you can see uh, my wife and our six kids. Here in the studio, I have my oldest, Hannah, and second oldest, Abraham. And uh, we're going to be going through the church's mission prep class. Uh, so we're going to be following the church manual for, for uh, mission preparation. Um, as a reminder, though, this is nothing official from the church. If you have the opportunity, you should definitely take this class from your ward or stake or elsewhere from CES. <clears throat> but this is not anything official from the church. Just me teaching these guys and recording it for others to uh, watch and listen. <clears throat> if you have uh, something to take notes on, I think that's best. In case you have inspiration from the Spirit, you can write it down. So, um, like I said, today is lesson 13. We have had 12 prior lessons, which you can find on uh, my website, uh, YouTube channel, and podcast. Um, lesson 1 was about the missionary's purpose to invite others to come unto Christ. Lesson 2 was about the atonement of Jesus Christ. 3 and 4, we talked about teaching and learning by the Spirit. We talked about the role of the Book of Mormon in Lesson 5. 6 was about uh, life as a missionary. 7 and 8 were uh, lessons about teaching uh, the restoration. 9 was on Christ-like attributes. 10 and 11 were on teaching the plan of salvation. And uh, last time we talked about finding people to teach. That was Lesson 12. So check out any of those previous lessons if you have a chance. Um, <clears throat> Here I'm going to give you a quick overview of today's lesson and next week's lesson. So we're going to be talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is defined as the eternal doctrines, principles, laws, covenants, and ordinances needed to enter the presence of God and be exalted in the celestial kingdom. So it's the missionary's role to help investigators complete the first principles and ordinances of the gospel, which are, you can all probably say it with me from the fourth article of faith, faith, faith. In, in Jesus Christ, Christ, Christ is the first one. Repentance. Repentance, which is godly sorrow or a change of heart and mind. Baptism, Baptism by, by immersion. immersion, and that's our first covenant. Um, and then the gift of the Holy Ghost is the fourth of the first principles and ordinances of the gospel. So today we're going to be talking about just those first two, faith and repentance. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to talk about uh, baptism and the gift of the Holy Ghost. So you can look forward to that. <clears throat> now, I wanted to start off with a story from my mission. Um, and it's about a young lady I, I taught and baptized when I was in a city called Fray Luis Beltran. Now, um, I didn't want to show a picture of her or give her name uh, for privacy uh, reasons. So I thought I'd show a picture of, of my district uh, in in the city of uh, Beltran. That is so awkward. That space That's right this, in the uh, You know, and all my mission pictures where we have sisters, it's it's like that. Why? It, well, I can't put my arm around sister missionaries. You're not allowed to be affectionate or touchy with... with I'm posing with, for a picture. Even posing for a picture, Dang. you're not allowed to uh, get cozy with missionaries from the opposite sex. So... All right. Got to be careful there. Um, yeah, so this was my third area. Um, and so I was still kind of a new uh, missionary, uh, but this was the first time I was a senior companion. I was also district leader of these six missionaries. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, like I said, I was still new. And the story I'm going to tell you kind of illustrates that I was a new and inexperienced missionary. So um, we were teaching this young woman... Uh, and she was probably 19 or 20 years old, I'm guessing. She had a boyfriend, and uh, he was in all the discussions, though he didn't seem interested in the gospel, but she was. Uh, her family had been baptized recently, and, and now she wanted to get uh, baptized. So we were teaching her the lessons, and um, since she had a boyfriend... When we got to uh, the, the lesson where we taught about the law of chastity and so forth... 
um, I was I, I, I was slow and, and you know, uh, took my time to make sure she understood what the law of chastity was and what it meant. Um, I, I remember feeling awkward because I didn't want to come out and ask, you know, are you having any law of chastity violations since your boyfriend's sitting right here? Mm. Uh, but, 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 I, but I felt like I was clear about what the law of chastity was and I asked her to commit to uh, obey the law of chastity and she said yes. So uh, anyway, all was good. She, she got all the lessons. That at, at that time, there were six missionary discussions that were the lessons we taught. And uh, before uh, someone's baptized, you guys may or may not know this, the missionary um, uh, have to interview the person, uh, the, the, the baptismal interview questions. But the missionaries who teach the person aren't allowed to do that interview. It has to be a different set of missionaries. So in this case, the zone leaders came and interviewed this young lady uh, for her baptismal interview. And uh, so after the, the interview was over, uh, I, I went and asked the, the zone leader who did the interview, how did it go? Is everything good for the baptism? We got it all scheduled and so forth. And he's like, yeah, she's pretty good, except she's not living the law of chastity. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, I stressed this with her. Um, but um, obviously, I wasn't forthright enough. And um, was she living with her boyfriend? Uh, I don't. I don't remember. I don't think she lived with him, but he no. was around all the time. Yeah. And um, so, uh, so the 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 zone leader told me, you know, this doesn't have to stop her baptism. We might need to delay it for a few weeks. She needs to, you know stop being intimate with her boyfriend and she needs to uh you know repent and, and commit to keeping that commandment going forward and um uh, and so um anyway so so we 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 had a had a lesson with her in private without her boyfriend around where you know we where we thought we could be a little more open and um uh, and, uh, and we, we talked to her about it and she agreed to uh, obey it and to, to repent. And we, you know, we, we stressed that, she, you know, she wasn't in trouble. It, it, repentance isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's changing to become more Christ-like and come unto Christ. Um, so anyway, this, t today's lesson is about having faith and, and repenting. So I thought that that was a, a good, a good story. She eventually did get baptized. And, um, so, so that was a blessing. So, I wanted to start off by talking about uh, what is sin. It, it's going to set up the need, of course, for, for repenting uh, later on. So, let's talk about what is sin. And this is the definition from the Preach My Gospel manual. Hannah, do you want to read that? Sure. The notion of sin means different things in different cultures. In some cultures, it is closely associated with the concept of committing crime. In others, it applies only if one is caught doing this doing something wrong and thus bring shame to a family or community. Clarify, clarify that sin is disobedience to God's commandments and results in becoming separated from God. God's, God knows all that we do and think and we displease him when we sin. Excellent. So sin is when we disobey God's commandments. And we've talked about this in some of the other lessons. It, it results in a separation, um, spiritually speaking, from God. Okay, Abe, why don't you read this quote from uh, the Preach My Gospel manual about why we need Jesus Christ to be cleansed from sin. As the result of Adam and Eve's transgression, death is experienced by all people. And because all people have made mistakes and sinned, they are un unable to return to live with God because no un th unclean thing can dwell in his presence. However, through the Savior's grace and mercy, we will live again as resurrected beings and can be clean from sin so that we can live in our Heavenly Father's presence. Becoming clean from sin is being healed spiritually. Excellent. I'll read this one. Uh, so, um, in spite of what, what, what we just read about uh, Jesus cleansing us from sin, that doesn't uh, you know, absolve us of, of responsibilities. We do have responsibilities, and they're to keep God's commandments. Preach My Gospel says, Jesus did not eliminate our personal responsibility. He forgives our sins when we accept him, repent, and obey his commandments. 
through Jesus Christ's atonement and living the gospel, we can enter the presence of our Heavenly Father permanently. We show that we accept Christ and that we have faith in Him by doing His will and keeping His commandments, including obeying the first principles and ordinances of the gospel, which is what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about um, justice and mercy. We've got a couple of slides on this because... Um, obviously, uh, you know, punishment for our you know, breaking the commandments is kind of the justice side, and, and the mercy side is Jesus forgiving us uh, when we follow Him and Him paying the price for our sins. So, Hannah, why don't you read this quote from Preach My Gospel about uh, justice and mercy? Okay. Justice is the unchanging law that brings consequences for actions, blessings for obedience to God's commandments, and penalties for disobedience. The Savior satisfied the demands of justice for those who repent of their sins and endeavor to keep all of his commandments when he stood in our place and suffered the penalty for our sins. Because of this selfless act, Christ can plead with the Father in our behalf. Heavenly Father can apply mercy, withhold punishment from us, and welcome us into his presence. Our Heavenly Father shows us mercy when he forgives us of our sins. Excellent. And the Book of Mormon has some great... Uh sermons on the balance between justice and mercy. A, would, do you mind reading these scriptures from the Book of Mormon about uh, balancing uh, mercy and justice? Mm -hmm. uh, Alma 42.25 Do you suppose that mercy can, job, can, mercy can rob justice? I say unto you, nay, not one way. If so, God would cease to be God. Mosiah 15.9 says that Jesus uh, having the bowels of mercy, being filled with compassion towards the children of men, standing betwixt them and justice, having broken the bands of death, taking taken upon himself their iniquity and their transgressions, having redeemed them and satisfied satisfied the demands of justice. Uh, uh, Alma forty two twenty four. Uh, for behold, justice exerciseth all his demands, and also mercy uh, claimeth all which is her own, and thus none but truly the truly penitent are saved. I didn't know there were two books of Alma. Yeah, sorry, that's a typo <laughs> on the screen. It's not second Alma, there's only one Alma. Okay, so, um, all right, so let's transition. We set the stage for the role of Jesus Christ and, uh, and repentance. So let's talk about the first principle of the gospel, which is faith in Christ. Preach My Gospel, the, the missionary manual says, the gospel of Jesus Christ begins with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Having faith in Christ includes having a firm belief that he is the only begotten son of God and the savior and redeemer of the world. Neither... Uh, so this is uh, uh, Acts 4, uh, 10 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, only by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, um, Hannah, will you read this uh, well-known verse, uh, John three sixteen and 17, about why God sent his son to... For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, we talked about sin. We all sin. I, I mean, I think we've talked about that in the past. I don't, in, in, in this lesson, we probably could have stressed that a little more. We all make mistakes. We all sin. God knows that, and he's provided a way for us to be cleansed of our sins and be able to return to his presence. And that is through his son, Jesus Christ. He didn't send Christ to condemn us. He sent Christ to save us. Abe, do you want to read all this? Or do you want to split it with me? I'll, I'll just read it. Okay, this is um, talking about salvation comes through Jesus Christ. A, a sermon in 2 Nephi chapter 2, verses... 6 through 8. Go for it. Wherefore, redemption cometh in and through the Holy Messiah, for he is full of grace and truth. 
Behold, he offereth himself a sacrifice for sin, to answer the ends of the law, unto all those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and unto none else can the ends of the law be answered. Wherefore, how great the importance to make these things known unto the inhabitants of the earth, that they may know that there is no flesh that can dwell in the presence of God, save it be through the merits and mercy and grace of the Holy Messiah, who layeth down his life according to the flesh, and taketh it again by the power of the Spirit, that he may bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, being the first that should rise. Excellent. Excellent. So, so uh, the Savior's role is indispensable. In our salvation um, and so we need faith in Christ in order um, in order to uh, to do the things necessary to to be cleansed and to have the atoning uh, grace uh, applied in our life so so we, we need faith in Christ and and faith is a principle of action preach my gospel explains this it says Faith in Christ leads to action. It leads to sincere and lasting change. Having faith causes us to try as hard as we can to learn about and become more like our Savior with unshaken faith in Him, relying wholly upon the merits of Him who is mighty to save. We want to learn His will and keep His commandments, when we have faith, that is. Even though we will still make mistakes, we show our love for him by striving through the power of Christ's atonement to keep his commandments and avoid sin. A lot of reading today, a lot of quotes. Sorry, guys. It's all right. We'll, we'll get through it. It's good stuff. I, I, I actually tried to cut it down. The, the manual just has so much, and I tried to cut it down to the most essential. So, Hannah, will you read this um, further about how we show our faith by obeying the commandments? Mm hmm we believe in Christ and we believe that he wants us to keep all his commandments. We show our faith by obeying him. We pray in faith for strength to conquer temptation. We also grow in faith by hearing and reading the words of God. As we obey God, he blesses us. He gives us power to meet life's challenges. He helps us change the desires of our hearts. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, he can heal us both physically and spiritually. We all need that healing, physical and spiritual, and it comes through faith in Christ. Excellent. So, all right, let's pause for a second. We, we've read a lot of quotes from uh, the scriptures and from the Preach My Gospel manual. So, what does it mean to have faith in Christ? To believe in Him. Believe that He exists. Believe that He's the Son of God. Believe that He's our Savior. Yep. Believe all those things. Excellent. So, what are some actions... That might show that an investigator has faith in Christ. We said it's a principle of action, faith is. So what actions could could an investigator take to demonstrate their faith in Christ? Mm. I don't know, pray and read their scriptures. Read scriptures and pray, sure. What else? Um, like making changes in their life yeah. so that they can... Yeah, like if they I smoke, stop smoking... Yeah. Uh, coming to church is always a big one. I mean, it's it, that's a big deal if someone comes to church. I mean, it's, it's great. And, and that takes action on their part and shows faith. So what has your faith in Jesus Christ motivated you to do? That can be a ponder question if you don't want to. But if you have something to say, go for it. So what has uh, uh, faith in Christ motivated you to do? And how have you been blessed by exercising your faith? Those are both questions to ponder any thoughts i feel like you know doing this class and recording it and sharing it is, is something i felt motivated to do and, and exercise my faith and we're, we're doing it and hopefully it'll be good for you guys and for some people watching and listening and i think uh, god always blesses us when we exercise our faith okay all right i need a volunteer and I only have two members of my class, so it's one of you two. Volunteer. And if you're going to volunteer, because if you don't volunteer now, 
You're going to have to volunteer later because I have another volunteer activity later on. I'll volunteer. All right, Hannah's going to go first. Okay, so pretend you're a missionary. You're teaching an investigator. Mm -hmm. Teach them what does it mean to have faith in Jesus Christ. Use your own words. Make it short and sweet, but clear. What does it mean to have faith in Christ? Um, isn't, that's what we like were just saying, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we've been talking about. <laughs> um, having faith in Christ means believing that he exists and that he's God's son and that God sent him here to save us from our sins. Right, right, right. That's what it means. And are there, what are the implications of faith? Um, what do you mean? Like, what does it mean to have it? Mm -hmm. um, that you'll, I don't know, trust in him and go to him because you know he's there to save you. Yeah, yeah, I like those verbs. Trust in God, go to him. It, like, like we said earlier, it's Faith is a principle of, of action. So you can't have faith in Christ like in a vacuum and like not do anything about it. It, it, it compels you to action. Come unto to, Christ. To come to Him, to obey His commandments and follow His ways. Excellent. All right, so let's move on to the second principle of the gospel, repentance. All right. Um, I don't remember whose turn it is to read, but I guess I'll just go. So uh, actually, oh, I thought we could take turns because we got like, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven verses here. I thought we could take turns reading from Alma 36. We're going to read the story of Alma the Younger and his conversion. So let's see. I'll start, and then Hannah, and then A. We'll just go around taking turns. Verse 6. For I went about with the sons of Mosiah. This is Alma speaking. But behold, God sent his holy angel to stop us by the way. Uh, what did I skip yeah, a, a line? For <laughs> I went about with the sons of Mosiah seeking to destroy the church of God. But behold, God sent his holy angel to stop us by the way. And behold, he spake unto us as it were the voice of thunder, and the whole earth did tremble beneath our feet. We all fell to the earth, for the fear of God came upon us. And he said unto me, If thou wilt thyself be wilt of thyself be destroyed, seek no more to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass that I fell to the earth, and it was the space of three days and three nights that I could not open my mouth, neither had I uh, the use of my limbs. And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now, as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, uh, who am in the gall of bitterness, and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now, behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. And oh, what joy and what marvelous light I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with Joy as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand there can be nothing there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. But behold, my limbs did receive their strength again, and I stood upon my feet and did manifest unto the people that I had been born of God. And yea, from that time even until now, I have labored without ceasing that I might bring souls into repentance, that I might bring them to taste of the exceeding joy of which I did taste, that they might also be born of God and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay, good stuff there. We're gonna, let's, let's talk about this. So what do we learn about repentance from the story of Alma the Younger? Any thoughts? Anything stick out to you? Uh, it's not. Well, hmm. I was going to say it's not easy, but then I was also, I feel like it's easier than you think. It, I think that's like, a great way to daunting, put it. It is but hard. But once you get down to it, like, 
it's, Christ is very willing to help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a hard thing. It's a humbling thing. It's, I mean, he went through some excruciating pain. I mean, it's it's not pleasant what he's describing, the gall of bitterness and just the torture of his soul. But it's worth it. In fact, he, he even says, uh, you know, here at the end, how great the joy was that he, you know, the rest of his life was dedicated to uh, building up the church and helping other people repent and go through the same process, basically. Yeah, it's it's difficult, but it's it's well worth it. Uh, any other things uh, that you noticed about this repentance of Alma the Younger? How did he demonstrate his faith in Christ? Uh, praying. Uh-huh. And asking sincerely. Uh-huh. I mean... Yeah. He was going about... He was passed out, but... <laughs> yeah, well, well, he was passed out for three days, but in that state, yeah. he did cry out to, he remembered... to Jesus. He remembered the teachings of his father. Yeah. So that shows that maybe even, like, while he was, like, sinning and stuff, that he knew in the back of his mind, like, hope was important, maybe. The fact that he still remembered that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, what did Alma do to demonstrate his repentance? He went and taught other people. Oh, that's the same question. Demo oh, f demonstrate his faith, demonstrate his repentance. So, yeah. So, I think that, that that mental action of praying and reaching out to the Savior was a demonstration of his faith. And demonstration of his repentance was how he dedicated his life to the ministry after that. Mm -hmm. And he, did, he didn't go back to, uh, you know... Uh, yeah. destroying the church, you know. Uh, he, he, he was dedicated the rest of his life to the Lord. Okay. Uh, whose turn is it? Abe, is it your turn? Or... Sure. Why don't you read this quote? This is um, a talk from Neil L. Anderson called Repent That I Might Heal You, which is, that's a quote from Third Nephi chapter 9. Um, anyway, re uh, quote, read this quote from Elder Anderson. When we sin, we turn away from God. When we repent, we turn back toward God. Repentance is uh, re repentance is turning away from something such as dishonesty, pride, anger, and impure thoughts, and turning towards other things such as kindness, unselfishness, patience, and spiritually. Uh, spirituality. spirituality. Yep. Yeah. It is re- Turning towards God. Mm -hmm. oh, re turning. Uh, mm -hmm. Funny. Very good. All right, um, Hannah, why don't you read this verse? Now, this this is an activity. So, as Hannah reads this, see if you can identify the words and phrases uh, in this verse that explain what it means to repent. Okay. For the natural man is an enemy to God, and has been from the fall of Adam, and will be forever and ever, unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, and putteth off the natural man, and becometh a saint through the atonement of Christ the Lord, and becometh as a child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord does see fit to inflict upon him, even as a child does submit to his father. Okay, which words stand out as... Uh, explaining what repentance means. Putting a lot of this, off the natural man. Putting off the natural man. Just a lot of the stuff, unless he, uh, so yielding to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, yielding, becoming as a child. Yeah, being humble. Yep, yep, yep. Well, excellent. So yeah, I put. I, I these are what I noticed: yielding to the enticings, putting off the natural man, like you said, becoming a saint. <laughs> Being uh, like a child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, and submitting to all things. Good, good. All right. Uh, is it my turn to read? I'll read this one. Again, pay attention to the words uh, here in Mosiah 4 uh, that, that teach us about repentance and what it means. And they had viewed themselves in their own carnal state, even less than the dust of the earth. And they all cried with one voice, saying, Oh, have mercy, and apply the atoning blood of Christ, that we may receive forgiveness of our sins, and our hearts may be purified. For we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who created heaven and earth and all things. And it came to pass that after they had spoken these words, the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. 
And they were filled with joy, having received a remission of their sins and having peace of conscience. Behold, uh, because of the exceeding faith, faith which they had in Jesus Christ who should come. Okay? What stands out to you? Mm, Meaning? They viewed themselves in their own carnal kind of state. Yeah. They viewed themselves less than the dust of the earth. So they're humble. Excellent. What else? Mm, they cried out. Yeah. They prayed or cried out, reached out. And then... Well, in verse 3, it talks about the effects mm -hmm. of what happens when they repent. They received a piece of conscience mm -hmm. they, because of their faith, so having faith. I think that's a sign that you can know that you've truly repented if you have that peace and that joy that it mentions. All right, excellent. Yeah, so I've, I've pointed out some of those exact same things. Uh, their hearts were purified. That's another sign of, of true repentance. Uh, excellent, excellent. All right, uh, Abe, why don't you read this one? Mosiah 5, 2. Again, this is, this is the last one uh, of this activity. Pay attention to words that explain what it means to repent. And they all cried with one voice, saying, Yea, we believe all the words which thou hast spoken unto us. And also we know of their surety and truth because of the Spirit of the Lord Omnipotent. Uh, which has wrought a mighty change in us or in our hearts that we have no more disposition to do evil but to do good continually. Okay. Do uh, no more disposition yeah. to do evil. Yeah, I like that. If you've truly repented, you don't have that disposition or, or desire to do evil, but you rather to do good. What else? Mm. Anything else stand out? A mighty change. Yeah, you have a mighty change of heart mighty change within us belief faith excellent all right good 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 so um the preach my gospel manual points out these items that are fruits of repentance or evidence of sincere repentance uh, our hearts and our behavior will become more christ-like we will be more prepared to live with god and jesus we feel god's forgiveness and peace in our life our guilt and sorrow are swept away. We will want to show our love by obeying God. We develop Christ-like qualities and serve more effectively. We feel joy and the influence of the Spirit of God in greater abundance. So those are all fruits of repentance. Uh, Hannah, will you read this one? This is a quote from the Preach My Gospel manual about what it means to repent through the atonement. Of Jesus Christ. Yep. Our faith in Jesus in Christ and our love for Him lead us to repent, or to change our thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors that are not in harmony with His will. Repentance includes forming a fresh view of God ourselves in the world, feeling godly sorrow, serving God with full purpose of heart, doing stop doing things that are sinful, continuing doing things that are right, bringing our lives in line with God's will. We can only return to live with God and the Father through Christ's grace and mercy when we receive Christ's mercy on the condition of repentance. I've never heard uh, anyone anyone say a fresh view of God. I've never heard that phrase. Yeah, so. me yeah the manual mentioned that several times. Uh, so I included it. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't recall hearing of that a lot either. I mean, I like it. What do you think that means? A fresh view of God, ourselves, and the world. That happens when we repent. Like, to me, you know, it's like you know, when we get baptized, we become a new creature, right? We're supposed to leave our old sinful self in the past, and we're reborn, and we're a new creature. Uh, new eyes, a new way of seeing the world. Seeing ourselves, seeing our gods, seeing uh, seeing the plan of salvation, and uh, it it just gives you a whole new new outlook, I think, on life when you truly repent. So uh, let me uh, continue from the preach my gospel manual. It says repentance also includes confessing our sins to God, asking God to forgive us. Confessing serious sins to priesthood leaders like your bishop or stake president. Uh, and also restitution, which means correcting problems our actions may have caused. As we change, we recognize that we are children of God and that we need to 
uh, that we need not continue making the same mistakes over and over. If we sincerely repent, we turn away from our sins and do them no more. We resist any desire to commit sin. Our desire to follow God grows deeper and deeper. So at this point, I wanted to pause from the lesson and give um, an experience that I've had. I've been running the um, uh, Latter-day Saint Mission Prep website for 11 years now. And the most common question I get through the website um, is about law of chastity violations. And it's, it's, there's, there's this common thread that's so similar in so many of the emails and comments on the websites I get, the website that I get. And it's, it, it often goes like this. They've, they've committed some law of chastity violations, some serious ones, uh, and, and they need help getting through the repentance process. They, they usually have a desire to serve a mission. Um, oftentimes they were kind of lax and in going to church and following the standards of the church. And maybe they got a boyfriend and girlfriend and they, uh, and they let it go. Things get too far, uh, with that boyfriend and girlfriend in terms of sexual intimacy, but they feel bad about it and they've decided they want to repent and they want to change. They want to go on a mission. They, they want to do what Alma has done. Um, and, and they often write to me asking if it's still possible. They know they need to repent. They know they need to confess to their bishop, but they, they're afraid to talk to their bishop. They're afraid of their parents uh, finding out. So this is a very common scenario. And so my advice to these youth and to anyone listening um, today is if, if this is your situation, Go talk to your bishop right away and be open with your parents. Most the youth I find are pleasantly surprised at how loving, helpful, and supportive their bishop is and their parents are in this situation. So I, I encourage youth in this situation. I, I first and foremost, I would encourage everyone to avoid this situation. Don't let things get out of hand. Stay close to the church. Stay close to the standards. Keep keep the covenants you have made to stay clean and worthy. But if things uh, do go too far, do like it says in Joshua 1.9, uh, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid. When you go through the repentance process, it's actually a huge weight off your shoulders uh, when you confess to the bishop. So um, yes, it's true that serious sins can delay your mission or might prevent you from serving your mission. But Making the situation uh, right with the Lord is the eternally uh, right thing to do. So have courage to do that. Okay, so we're wrapping up here. Uh, we're getting close to wrapping up. Let's go over what, what it means, uh, what is repentance, how you repent, and what are the fruits of repentance. So just quickly rattle off, what is repentance? Confessing and forsaking your sins. Confessing, forsaking your sins. Uh, changing your ways. Yeah. The, I think the root of the word repentance means to change. So yeah, so change your thoughts and behaviors. Uh, have a fresh view of God. Like I said, that Emmanuel talks about that a lot. Bring our life in line with God's will. Turn away from sins. Continually try to do better. Whoops. So how do we repent? What, like, what are the steps we take to repent? Hannah said confessing. Okay, uh, yeah. you need to confess to God, and if it's really serious, confess to your bishop. What else? Forsake it. I mean, like, stop mm -hmm. doing it. Yep, stop. And then... Well, again, change your ways. Mm -hmm. So, change your ways, do good things. And pray. Do it. Pray. Yeah. Yeah, feel sorrow. You need to feel sorrow, godly sorrow for your sins. Stop doing the wrong things. Confess. Ask forgiveness. Correct the problem or make restitution. Resist future desire to sin. Develop your Christ-like qualities and show love for God by obeying his commandments. All right, so what are the fruits of repentance? Joy, peace. Peace, peace joy. Of hmm? Yeah, peace of mind. Peace of mind. A desire to follow God will grow. You'll feel God's forgiveness. You'll feel his peace. Your guilt will be swept away. The sorrow swept away. You'll feel joy and the influence of the Holy Ghost. You'll be more prepared to live with God and you'll become more like Christ. Excellent. So this is the um, last question I have for you. So um, Hannah was my first volunteer. Whoops. Sorry, I was supposed to take this slide out. This is, this is the slide. 
this is the second volunteer. Abe, you're up. Okay. So imagine you're a missionary and you're teaching an investigator. This is the scenario. Uh, after a couple of lessons, uh, you can tell the man you're teaching is losing interest. And when you talk to him, he explains that he knows he's not living according to God's commandments. He's lived his whole life this way, and he doesn't feel like there's much that he can do about it now. So in your own words, teach and testify of repentance. And try to be, be uh, short and sweet, simple and clear. What does it mean to repent for this young man? No matter if you, you don't think you can do anything about it, you can always change. You can always get on the right path. Mm -hmm. And to get on the right path, you can... Uh, Confess and forsake and uh, feel sorrow, but then also know that when you repent, you will receive uh, joy and peace and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Very good. Perfect. That was clear and concise. You told him what... Uh, uh, that, that it is possible. So many people think that they're, they're, they're too far gone that they can't come back. But, but, but you can. You can repent. You can change. You can uh, receive the, the peace and joy uh, of repentance and, and be able to live with God someday. Excellent. So um, next time we will talk about uh, the baptismal covenant and receiving the Holy Ghost, the third and fourth of the first four principles and ordinances of the gospel. So uh, just in conclusion, a couple of homework assignments. Ask your parents in an upcoming family home evening uh, if you can teach a lesson on faith and repentance. Maybe we'll have you guys do that for our family. I think it'd be good for you. Uh, and study about the doctrine of repentance in the scriptures and the words of the prophets. Uh, take notes and write it in your journal what you learn about repentance. There's a great church video out there about uh, faith and repentance. It's called Jesus Christ is the way. So check that out. I'll leave you with my testimony that uh, what we've discussed today, these gospel principles are true and have been revealed by God. Uh, Jesus Christ is our Savior and Redeemer. He's real. He died for us. He resurrected, lives today, and guides the church. He's provided a way for us to uh, repent, to change our ways, to become better, uh, and to become like He is. And if we follow God's plan, uh, have faith in Christ, and repent, uh, I know that He will cleanse us and bless us with uh, uh, the blessings of eternal life and exaltation. And I bear that testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Hey, thanks everyone for watching and listening. Be sure to visit the Latter-day Saint Mission Prep website at mormonmissionprep.com. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Subscribe.